So now that we have these four, consumption, investment, government spending, export and import, what we can go and calculate is the demand for goods in the economy. Let's call that Z. So the demand for goods, the total demand for goods in an economy is given by, let me write down the formula first and I'll explain then. So C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Okay, so what does this mean? So what we're trying to do is calculate the amount of demand that exists for all the goods in the economy. So consumption, obviously is part of that demand because that's directly what we're buying. So there is demand for those goods. Investment, remember, is when we are buying houses or other fixed assets or when companies are buying machineries or other capital goods. So that is part of the economic demand as well. Similarly, when government is spending, what is government spending money behind? They're buying something as well. So that's part of the demand as well. Export is, well, we may not have demand for exports since we're not consuming it, but foreigners does. There is a demand for the goods that the economy is producing from abroad. So however much we export, has to be added as well to the demand for goods. And the reason we subtract imports is because this is what we're consuming from another country. This, was, this is demand for the goods and services of another country's production. So we subtract that. What we usually do is write this equation like this, x minus m, or we may simplify this further and write c plus i plus g plus nx, where nx stands for net export, which is equal to export minus import. The important thing is that using this, I like this, uh, using this simple formula, we can calculate the total demand for goods and services. To keep things simple at this level, we are going to assume that this is a closed economy. By closed economy, what I mean is that this country that we're dealing with, suppose Bangladesh, does not trade with any other country. So there is no import, there is no export, which means that NX is zero. That means we get Z equals to consumption plus investment plus G. So this is the equation we're going to deal with. Uh, at a latter class, uh, actually probably at a latter course, not in 207, you are going to spend a lot of time behind net export and basically see the effects of import and export has on a, on a country's economic performance, but not in 207. We want to keep things simple. So just as a review, what we have done is we're looking at the composition of GDP, what comprises a country's GDP. We've identified these four factors, consumption, investment, government spending, and foreign trade, basically. Let me write that down. These two together gives us international trade. And using these four factors, what we can do is construct 
an equation for the demand of goods in an economy, the total demand that's coming from the consumers, the different firms and different companies and the government and even the foreigners who may like some of our goods. And then what we've done is we've assumed this is a closed economy. So there is no uh, foreign trade in X is zero. And so we've simplified this equation into this, where demand for goods comes only from consumption, from investment, and from government expenditure. Now, we're going to simplify things even more. So what we are going to assume is that investment is fixed, government expenditure is fixed. What I mean by that is that these are going to be exogenous variables and C is going to be an endogenous variable. So if you guys have done eco 201, you should know what an exogenous and an endogenous variable means. But basically, in the simplest way possible, what exogenous means is that we are not going to try and determine the value of investment and government spending from within this model. We're going to assume that the values are given and there's nothing that we can do to affect these variables. So if government expenditure is 1 billion, for example, it is 1 billion and nothing is going to change that. Similarly, if investment is, let's say the same thing, 1 billion, uh, there is nothing that we can do to change the level of investment. However, consumption is an endogenous variable. That means that the value of C is going to be determined within the model that we are going to develop now. So certain things can happen to the economy that is going to affect the value of consumption. So consumption. Okay. The equation for consumption is this, where C0 is autonomous consumption C1 is the marginal propensity to consume so known as the MPC and YD is disposable income. Okay, let's talk about all three of them and try to understand what they are. Let's start with disposable income. What this means is very simply income minus tax. So you earn a certain amount of money, but you can't obviously spend all of this money because you have to pay a certain portion of it as taxation. So suppose your income is 10,000 taka, but you have a tax rate that is 20%. That means your tax payment is what? 20% of 10,000 taka, which is 2,000. So out of your income of 10,000, you're paying 22,000 as tax, which means 
your disposable income yd is your income before tax which is 10,000 minus how much you're paying as tax which is 8,000 taka so that's what disposable income is basically the income you have left over after you have paid your tax next come to let's come to c1 which is the marginal propensity to consume that sounds complicating but in very easy language this is basically the amount of your income that you consume because you don't consume all your income what you also do is you save so let's stay within the same example you have a disposable income of 8000 let's suppose what you decide to do is you want to spend 6000 of this and you want to save 2000 out of this so what percentage of your income are you saving so you're saving 2000 out of 8000 or actually a better way of thinking about this what percentage are you spending or what percentage are you consuming so you have an income of 8000 out of that you're spending or you're consuming 6000 so times 100 per this is not needed sorry so what you get is 0 0.75 so what does this 0 0.75 mean? This means that out of your income, you're willing to spend or you're willing to consume 75%. And the remaining 20%, you're going to save. So this is known as your marginal propensity to consume how much are you likely to consume how much are you likely to save okay and now let's come to c0 which is the autonomous consumption c0 is consumption when income is zero okay what does this mean uh, so obviously how much we consume depends on how much income we are making uh, so as our income go up we consume more we all know how that works but when our income is zero do we consume zero well that's not possible we're going to die so in a year in which let's say we're not working what do we do? Maybe we have savings that we spend. Maybe we borrow from someone else. But one way or another, even if income is zero, we consume something. That is called autonomous consumption, and that is C0. Okay, so now if I write down this equation again, hopefully it will make more sense so consumption is equal to first of all we have c naught autonomous consumption so even if we don't have any income see at this stage we do not have any income income is zero our consumption is equal to c naught but then we start to make some money and as we make more money we consume more so plus we have income but of course we have to pay tax or instead of y minus t i can just write yd this is how much we have 
that we can actually spin behind consumption. But we don't want to consume all of this. We want to save some. So we multiply it with our marginal propensity to consume. And this is what we get. So let's, let's see the situation. So our income is 10,000. I'm working backwards now. We've already seen this. The tax rate that we face is 20%. Uh, the MPC, or let's call it C1, is 0 0.75, and our C0, so suppose C0 is 3,000. So what that means is even if we're not earning any income, we will be consuming 3,000. Okay. Now, given this information, how much will we consume? So we're going to be consuming 3,000 one way or another. That's this. Plus, how much is our disposable income? We've done this calculation already. It's 8,000. Out of this 8,000, we want to save some, and we want to consume 75% of it. So what do we get? We get 3,000 plus 6,000, which is 9,000. And that is our consumption. 